Coming up next, here on Golf America. We're heading to the western part of North Carolina as we pay a visit to two very special layouts. That's why I think it caters so well to uh, golfers of all skill levels. It's not a golf course that you can just bomb it and go find it uh, as a lot of the younger guys like to play these days. Plus, we'll take you on a tour of a city about as funky and culturally diverse as you'll find anywhere. Then golf fitness instructor Mindy Boysen serves up another fitness tip to get you fit for golf and fit for life. Golf America, a weekly look at the courses you play and the game we love is brought to you by Antigua, always well played, and by The Golf Ring, a game changer, and Warrior Custom Golf. Hi everyone and welcome to the program. Well, this week we're heading to the western part of North Carolina as we take a look at two very special layouts. One is a mountain-style design created from a father-son team from the UK. And our course of the week, well, it's a link-style design that is both fun and very challenging to play. Western North Carolina, a land filled with mountains, flowing streams, and rivers. At the heart of this part of the Tar Heel State is the city of Asheville. Asheville offers a charm and flair that has attracted visitors from all over the globe. And while people come for its unique blend of shopping, cuisine, and culture, they are also discovering the region's abundance of fine golf courses. From mountain-style designs to Lynx layouts, Asheville and the surrounding area is the perfect spot for your next golf getaway. And just minutes from downtown Asheville is the Broadmoor Golf Links. Designed by noted golf course architect Carl Litton, Broadmoor Golf Links opened up for play back in 1993. On this relatively flat parcel of land filled with dense hardwoods and flowing streams, Carl Litton created a layout that is certainly a true test of golf. All the golf courses that I play here in the Asheville area, when I play this golf course, it's the only one that I'll generally clean off all my clubs when I get done playing. From tee to green, Broadmoor offers a challenge that even the better ball strikers will enjoy. As Litton put the emphasis on the player's ability to hit accurate shots off the tee and into the greens on each and every hole. Uh, very, very tight golf course that uh, will not bode well for someone that is not hitting it straight off the tee. Uh, if you have a club that you can hit about 230 yards out here, you can score pretty well, but you're going to have to hit it pretty straight. As water comes into play on 14 of the 18 holes out here, and because this is an Autobahn sanctioned golf course, you will also have to contend with hazards throughout your round as well. Uh, a lot of lateral hazards that come into play around the greens and some forced carries out here. So, and again, not only hitting it off the tee, but hitting it into the greens. Got to be pretty, pretty tactical in how you approach them. With its average size greens and subtle slopes, course designer Litton rewards those golfers who can safely get aboard the putting surfaces out here at Broadmoor in regulation. Broadmoor offers four sets of tees. For the low handicapper, there is more than enough challenge in this layout from the back goal tees, as the course plays to 7,140 yards, and offers a course rating of 72.9 and a slope of 133. The forward blue tees shortens up this layout considerably as they play to 63.69. Broadmoor Golf Links in Fletcher, North Carolina. A Carl Litton design that is not only fun and challenging to play, but is one of two wonderful layouts owned and operated by Warrior Golf in the beautiful Asheville area. Still to come on this week's show, golf fitness instructor Mindy Boysen serves up another fitness tip to get you fit for golf and fit for life. Plus, we'll take you on a tour of a city about as funky and culturally diverse as you'll find anywhere. The best way to lower your score is by improving your short game. And the best way to master your short game is with the Golf Ring, the ultimate short game training challenge. 
The golf rings will improve your short game 100%. The golf ring serves as a visual aid as it defines the area around the hole. Just unfold golf ring and place it on the putting surface or anywhere you practice. The golf ring helps my students in defining where the true target is. Yours are only $19.95 and it's all guaranteed. It's going to help your scores. Call now. There aren't many things in the world that are absolutely free without some kind of catch. Well, today, there is no catch. Call now and get the new Warrior Tomahawk Hybrid Iron absolutely free. No gimmicks, no purchase necessary. Over a $200 retail value, free. All we ask is that you give us an accurate evaluation of the club's performance because your feedback is vitally needed before it's released to retail stores. Warrior makes this new 19-degree hybrid with extreme weighting technology. You'll hit this club longer and straighter than any other iron. Get the new Warrior Tomahawk Hybrid Iron today, and all you pay is for shipping and handling. Supplies are limited, so call now. Get the new Warrior Tomahawk Hybrid Iron today. It's time to make Warrior's Tomahawk Hybrid Iron your new weapon of choice. No purchase necessary and no catches. It's absolutely free. Call now. Fit for Golf and Fit for Life is brought to you by Antigua. Always well played. Hi, I'm Mindy Boysen, golf fitness coach here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now, one of the most important joints of the body used in the golf swing is the shoulder joint. Many injuries arise there, though, because of muscular imbalances or even weaknesses within those muscles around that tiny joint. Also, when there's a traumatic experience such as a golf swing hitting behind the ball or fat, which we've all done before, and out, that can really hurt. So today I'm gonna to introduce to you an exercise I call the Fab Four that I use with many of my clients. We're gonna use light weights, starting with threes. You can progress to five, eight, and even 10 pounds. Anything heavier than, than that is probably gonna be a little bit less effective and um, you don't wanna be swinging your weights. So, four exercises, 10 repetitions each exercise. First one, palms up, horizontal rotation, or abduction and adduction, out and in out and in. You're trying to keep your body still. My knees are slightly unlocked. Shoulders are back. Approximately 10. Then once you get to 10, turn your palms in. Same exercise, just a different angle of your wrists. Approximately 10. Then palms up. We're doing the under and over. Under and over. So we're going underhand and overhand. Under and over, back and forth, keeping your elbows still, palms down, over and under, over and under, elbows staying tight. Boy, I can really feel the burn around my shoulder joint right now. Little tiny muscles, but very, very important. Approximately 10, last one, hold, shimmy. You're trying to keep your knees still, your hips still, your trunk and core very, very strong. As you take those arms, push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. I can feel the heat in the shoulder joint now. And that's your last move. We've got palms up, palms in, the over and under, and the shimmy. One more time, 10 of each. Palms up, palms in, the over and under, and the shimmy. There you go, the Fab Four with three, five, eight, or 10 pound dumbbells. I'm Mindy Boysen. For these exercises and more, check out my site at fitforgolfusa.com. Western North Carolina is unique in so many different ways. You have the mountains, you have the rivers, and right in the middle is a city that is unique in its own way. Its culture is considered diverse and quite funky. Architecturally, some say there are very few cities like it for its size anywhere else in the U.S. In fact, several major publications have ranked this city as one of the top 20 places to relocate to in the U.S. Asheville, North Carolina, a city many consider as funky and culturally diverse as you'll find anywhere. The city is situated along the French Broad River Valley, right where the Great Smokies meet the Blue Ridge Mountains. The area's natural beauty, along with its temperate climate, has made Asheville a destination of choice for both young and old alike. But long before residents of current-day Asheville called the area home, 
It was the Cherokee who occupied the land in this part of western North Carolina. The area around Asheville was established by European settlers back in 1784 when Colonel Samuel Davidson and his family settled in this part of the state under a soldier's land grant. They called the area Morristown. Davidson's time spent in Morristown would be short-lived as he was killed by a band of Native Americans. By 1790, there were more than a thousand people living within the area. By 1797, Morristown was incorporated and renamed Asheville after North Carolina Governor Samuel Ashe. During the war between the states, Asheville remained relatively untouched, although the Battle of Asheville was fought in early April of 1865. The city prospered between 1910 up until the Great Depression. Then, of the nine local banks in town, only one survived by 1930. And for the next 50 years, Asheville's growth was anemic, to say the least. But Asheville had something going for it many locals took for granted. Its downtown was filled with one of the most impressive and comprehensive collections of Art Deco architecture in the U.S. Today, the once forgotten downtown of Asheville is the cultural center for Western North Carolina. And the neighborhoods in and around downtown are a mix of quaint single family homes and one time mansions turned into boutique bed and breakfast inns. While downtown, you'll find a wide variety of shops and restaurants. Asheville is also the perfect place to go to for those seeking outdoor adventure. With four navigable rivers, winter skiing, and all kinds of biking challenges, the area's reputation continues to grow as an outdoor mecca. As par threes go, hole number five at our course of the week, Broadmoor Golf Links in Fletcher, North Carolina, is probably one of the more challenging ones on the layout. It requires a pretty accurate tee shot as you carry water and try to avoid hitting into one of three different bunkers that protect the green complex. Do so and who knows, you might end up with a par, you may even get a birdie. Number five is a, a beautiful hole that is guarded by water on the front and the left, and again, one of those natural hazards on the back of the green. And because of its geographical location, more often than not, there is a prevailing wind here at Broadmoor. Which generally blows in one direction. It'll be right in your face, which is usually a one club wind. Uh, the bat marker on the gold tees uh, on that hole marks at 193 yards, but it would not be out of the ordinary whatsoever for it to play 210 or a little, bu little above. Although the green here at Broadmoor's fifth does slope from back to front, it will create a pretty difficult up and down should your tee shot land in either the front right or back bunker. I'd have to have a pretty delicate touch hitting, hitting up, splashing one out of those bunkers onto the green. Hole number five here at the Broadmoor Golf Links in Fletcher, North Carolina. One of four very challenging par threes you'll find on this Carl Litton design. Antigua, performance apparel found in fine golf shops worldwide. The best way to lower your score is by improving your short game. And the best way to master your short game is with the Golf Ring, the ultimate short game training challenge. 
The golf rings will improve your short game 100%. The golf ring serves as a visual aid as it defines the area around the hole. Just unfold golf ring and place it on the putting surface or anywhere you practice. So the golf ring helps my students in defining where the true target is. Yours for only $19.95. And it's all guaranteed. It's going to help your scores. Call now. The tip of the week is brought to you by Double Duty Divot Repair Butter. Save your back and knees. Purchase the Double Duty Divot Repair Butter. Hi, my name is Greg Wickensheimer. I'm the head golf professional at the Las Vegas Paiute Golf Resort. We're here for the tip of the week for Golf America. Today, we're going to talk about rhythm and getting started before we actually go play golf. So many times, my beginner players, they go out, they've got so much on their mind, they're really focused on swing thoughts, feeling a certain feel, working on their grip, their setup, their alignment, and they forget about the most important part, and that's rhythm. It's very important to have good rhythm when you're out on the golf course. I'm going to show you a drill today that will help you with your rhythm. I call this drill the one, two, three drill. And how it works is we're going to go through a three count while we're striking golf balls. We're going to forget about all our fundamentals and we're going to just work on rhythm before we go play. And this is how it works. I start with some golf balls teed up in a line. I'm going to try not to think too much about mechanics. I want to work on my rhythm while I'm out here on the driving range. I want to prepare my rhythm for the golf course. This is the best way to prepare your rhythm to make sure that you're not thinking about too many of the mechanics while you're making your swings. So how this works is I go ahead and grip the golf club. I'll step over my first ball, make sure that I'm lined up nice and relaxed, and I'm going to work my three count. The three counts is followed. My first count is one. I want to emulate how I want to feel after I've struck the golf ball towards my finish. Count number two is going to be at the top of my golf swing when I'm ready for my transition. And count number three will be striking the golf ball. I'm going to demonstrate how this drill works. Step up to the first ball, get my set up, count to three. One, two, three. Without thinking too much about ball path or club positions, step right to the next ball. Same thing, think about my drill. Forward one, two, three. Work right down the line. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. And one more time. Forward one, two, three. Make sure you adapt this three swing routine into your game before you go play to help you with your rhythm. You don't want to think too much mechanics while you're out on the golf course. Let's simplify it, help our golf game. Just to recap real quick, we're working on rhythm here. We want to make sure that we adapt this three count to our on-course play. Um, one, two, three, remember forward one to emulate our finish, to the top of the swing two, and strike the golf ball in three. And that's our tip of the week for Golf America. Just minutes north of downtown Asheville is a land steeped in history a place where the Cherokee called home. In the late 18th century, European settlers made their way to this part of North Carolina and discovered the abundance of creeks and streams that flowed through these mountains. Today, the area known as Reams Creek Village offers all the amenities one would expect in an upscale community at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Born out of the tradition of the Scottish Highlands is a golf course worthy of the village's name. Designed by the British firm of Halltree & Sons, Reams Creek features a challenging layout while at the same time offering up incredible views of the surrounding mountain ranges. And because this layout is very mountainous, it really does require a good bit of tactical approach from tee to green. That's why I think it caters so well to uh, golfers of all skill levels. It's not a golf course that you can just bomb it and go find it, uh, as a lot of the younger guys like to play these days. No, the style of play here at Reams Creek is really suited for those golfers who enjoy target-oriented golf. Then several holes really hold true to that concept. For example, at the 10th, you may think this par 5 is fairly short at 465 yards from the back tees. But don't let the scorecard lull you into thinking this is an easy golf hole. 
obviously the tee shot's daunting. You don't have much of a much of a landing area out there. There is out of bounds left. There is out of bounds right. And there's very little chance of you getting home in two as Haltry and Sons tighten up the fairway here at number 10, the closer you get to the green. With its four sets of tees, golfers of all skill levels can enjoy their round out here at Reams Creek. The back blue tees offer a layout that plays to just about 6,500 yards and features a course rating of 69.8 and a slope of 132. And while the numbers reflect a layout that seems fairly easy, it is the elevation changes, green complexes, bunkering, and the general routing of the course that create the difficulty of playing it. Absolutely. Uh, being an all-bent grass facility here in western North Carolina, historically the golf course needs to, uh, needs to uh, remain fairly damp because of the hot summers that we can get here. Not a whole lot of roll um, in your golf ball when you play over at Reams Creek, so absolutely. Uh, with, uh, with a combination of not a whole lot of roll and some elevation changes, uh, an extra club going into some, some slightly elevated greens will make up for some of the yardage for sure. Reams Creek Golf Club in Weaverville, North Carolina. A layout whose design characteristics are rooted deeply in the tradition of courses you would play in the highlands of Scotland and just minutes away from downtown Asheville. One could say it's mountain golf at its finest. Beautiful scenery. The uh, clubhouse over there with long range and short mountain views, it's uh, spectacular. The Double Duty Divot Repair Putter. Save your back, knees, and the putting surface. This putter is designed to repair ball marks without bending over. Made of stainless steel with a head weight of 360 grams, shaft length of 36 inches, swing weight of F2, 72 degree shaft angle, and a 3 degree club face angle. The Double Duty Divot Repair Putter. Visit the website divotrepairputter.com. The best way to lower your score is by improving your short game. And the best way to master your short game is with the Golf Ring, the ultimate short game training challenge. The Golf Rings will improve your short game 100%. The Golf Ring serves as a visual aid as it defines the area around the hole. Just unfold Golf Ring and place it on the putting surface or anywhere you practice. The Golf Ring helps my students in defining where the true target is. Yours for only $19.95. And it's all guaranteed. It's going to help your scores. Call now. Warrior makes this new 19-degree hybrid with extreme weighting technology. You'll hit this club longer and straighter than any other iron. Get the new Warrior Tomahawk Hybrid Iron today, and all you pay is for shipping and handling. Supplies are limited, so call now. Get the new Warrior Tomahawk Hybrid Iron today. It's time to make Warrior's Tomahawk Hybrid Iron your new weapon of choice. No purchase necessary and no catches. It's absolutely free. Call now. We talked earlier on how course designer Carl Layton really challenges the golfer to hit accurate shots at our course of the week. Broadmoor Golf Links in Fletcher, North Carolina. And I think hole number nine is a great example of how he goes about, and he does it. He forces the golfer to hit a fairly long tee shot there at number nine, and then follow it up with an accurate approach shot into a green complex that is protected by water, grass mounding, and a huge tree on the left-hand side. This is a golf course you've got to get around once to know where you need to hit it at. And hole number nine here at Broadmoor is a perfect example. Now off the tee, it looks like a relatively simple par four that dog legs right. But not having enough distance off the tee here at number nine can leave you with the unenviable task of hitting a mid iron into a green complex that is surrounded by water, a tree, and plenty of grass mounding. With these fairway bunkers left, many golfers may try to play away from them. But going too far right can certainly get one into trouble as well. If you hit the ball up the right side and don't catch absolutely all of it, um, there's a grouping of trees on the right side that'll prevent you from going at the center of the green or the right-hand side of the green. Smart play. Uh, 
is to hit the ball up the center or certainly favor the left hand side even though it gives you a slightly longer approach shot into the green. And as we mentioned with the tree guarding the green on the left hand side, the smart play here at hole number nine is to take aim for the center of the putting surface. The place to miss it is long, but anytime the, the pin is back left, that is probably the second hardest pin for me to hit at on, on the golf course when it's back left because you have no room to bail out long left. If you hit it long left, you've got a little bit of, or quite a bit of a touchy shot. Uh, to try to get your ball up and down, and if it's on that back slope and the greens are running fast, it's a three-putt scenario if you don't watch yourself. Well, special thanks to Travis Brotherton and his entire staff at both the Broadmoor Golf Links and Reams Creek Golf Club, two incredible Asheville area golf courses owned and operated by Warrior Golf. I'm Alan Hunter. For all of us here at Golf America, hit them long and straight, and we'll see you next time. Golf America, a weekly look at the courses you play and the game we love, has been brought to you by Antigua, always well played, and by The Golf Ring, a game changer, and Warrior Custom Golf.